In this video, I'll show you how to create and use a scriptable dictionary with custom types using SOAP, the scriptable object architecture pattern. We'll start with a simple scene where we have four object spawners. When we enter play mode and press a specific button, it will spawn an element of a particular type. If you've watched my video on scriptable enums, you'll know that we use them to implement different element types. In this case, we have four elements, air, fire, water, and earth. There's also a mesh collider placed below, which acts as a boundary to destroy objects that fall too far. The reason we're using a scriptable dictionary is that we want to keep track of how many objects exist for each element type. In this case, the key of the dictionary will be a scriptable enum element, and the value will be an integer representing the count of that element type. Let's go ahead and create the custom scriptable dictionary. To do this, we'll open the SOAP asset creator. Then, we'll click on scriptable dictionary which opens a special pop-up designed for creating this type of class. For the name, let's call it scriptable dictionary element int. The key will be a scriptable enum element and the value will be an integer. Once that's done, we'll press create. Now that our class is created, we need to create an instance of it. To do that, we will open the SOAP asset creator, select our newly created dictionary type, name it dictionary element count, and press create. Now, let's select our element master prefab. We can see that it already has an element component, which contains a reference to the element type and handles logic when colliding with another element. Let's add a new component and name it element type dictionary sync. We'll expose a reference to the scriptable dictionary we want to use. We could also expose a reference to a scriptable enum element for the element type. But since this object already has an element type reference in its element component, we can just retrieve it from there. So let's cache it in start. For the logic, if the element type isn't already in the dictionary, we'll add it with a count of 1. Otherwise, if the element type is already present, we'll simply increment the value using the element type as a key. That's one of the great things about dictionaries. You can define specific logic for when an item is first added and when it's already present. In destroy, we'll decrement the value using the element type as a key. If the count reaches zero, we'll remove the key from the dictionary. Now, let's go back to the inspector, reference our dictionary in this component, and save the master prefab. Since all our elements are prefab variants of the master prefab, this component will be automatically applied to all of them, which is pretty nice. All right, let's test this out. We'll enter play mode and spawn a few elements using the different buttons. Then, we'll open the SOAP wizard and filter only the scriptable collections. Now we can see there are two entries in the dictionary, 8 air elements and 10 fire elements. If we spawn a few more, we can see new entries being added, and when elements are destroyed, they're removed. So this is working exactly as expected. Now, I'd like to display these numbers in the UI so the player can see them. If we select the UI canvas and enable this object, I've already prepared a small UI element to display the icon and the count of a particular element type. Let's select the root and add a new component. We'll call it UI element count. We'll expose a reference to a scriptable enum element to represent the element type, a reference to our scriptable dictionary, and finally a reference to a text field and to the image, so we can update the UI. In start, we'll first disable the object that contains the text and icon. This is the parent of the text component. We'll also set the image sprite to match the icon of the scriptable enum element type. Now, for the logic, we'll first register to the onItem added callback in the dictionary. When an item is added, if it matches the element type, we'll simply enable the parent. Then, we'll register to the modified event, which is called anytime the scriptable dictionary gets updated. In this case, we'll retrieve the corresponding value based on the scriptable enum element type and update the text field. Finally, we'll register to an item removed and disable the container if the element type matches this class instance. And of course, we won't forget to unsubscribe from all these events in onDestroy. Back in the editor, we'll assign an element type. Let's start with air. Then assign the dictionary, the image, and the text references. Let's enter play mode to test it. We'll spawn a few air elements, and yes, the UI updates properly. Now, all we need to do is duplicate this UI element three times and set the correct element type for each. 
With this example, I hope you can understand how simple it is to bind logic and UI to a scriptable dictionary. I originally created this scriptable dictionary while working on an auto-battler prototype, where I needed a clean way to count different units of the same traits. Traits can be a race or class of units. Here, the key of the dictionary is also a scriptable enum, representing a trait, and the value is an int, representing the number of units sharing that trait currently on the battlefield. The dictionary is used in two ways. First, for the UI, to display the information to the player, and second, in the game logic, to determine which abilities get unlocked after reaching a certain number of units with the same trait. This kind of mechanic works really well, and it's been inspired from auto battler like teamfight tactics. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like working with scriptable objects, I highly recommend checking out SOAP. The link is in the description. See you in the next one.